A uh, little bit of background on me. Um, I came out of Miami University with a degree back then, they called it systems analysis. Basically it was, uh, it was computer programming, but um, maybe a more robust program. And I had a minor in marketing. So my career started off writing code, PL1, COBOL. Uh, through the course of my career, uh, my tasks moved more to the marketing side, but always for IT companies. And the last company I worked for uh, was an IT firm in Mason that had software for the apartment industry, for the multifamily housing industry. Kept track of tenants and their maintenance requests and people that visited and trying to turn them into tenants and all that stuff. Uh, so being director of marketing, one of my responsibilities was doing uh, the website, which meant that I was doing search engine optimization. I was also doing Google AdWords campaigns. That company grew to be about a $5 million company. And in 07, I st started thinking about, well, I'm doing SEO and you know, doing AdWords campaigns. And you know, back when Al Gore invented the internet, <laughs> everybody was told, you build a website, internet's gonna boom, you're gonna get more business than you know what to do with. Well, search came along, and it wasn't enough just to have a website. You had to show up and search. So August 1st of 07, I uh, started the company. If I'd have known, I wouldn't have gotten a first client till February of 08. I'm not quite sure, I don't know. I, 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 kind of just, I didn't know what I didn't know, so I just kind of jumped out there and did it. But we landed our first client in February of 08 and have been growing ever since. And as Pat said now, where there's four of us, we're over in uh, downtown Wyoming. We're trying to get out from becoming a micro company to be a small business actually. But it's fun, it's good, and this place is great. So I uh, can't say enough good things about it. So we're here to talk about search. And as you're starting your companies, how to, how to help, things to look for, how to, how to try to get ranked in search. And a lot of this initially is pretty basic, um, but kind of run through it, level set, and then get into kind of how search is changing and things to look for. And please, like Patrick said, if you have questions, just ask. Let's make it as interactive as possible. I normally walk around a lot, but because they're videoing, I kind of have to stay in this like four foot circle here. I'm tethered, so I can't move too much, but happy to take any questions you have. So why is search important? Of course, you know, create websites that used to advertise, search came along, you have to show up in search. Google, Yahoo, Bing, you see here 19 billion searches performed daily. Google gets about 70%, in real round numbers, Google does about 70% of all search traffic. Yahoo and Bing kind of fight over 25%, depending on, you know, Bing's doing there, we're a decision engine, not a search engine, you know, things like that. Marketing, they'll kind of go up and down a little bit, but together they have roughly 25%. And then believe it or not, there's still people out there that use AOL search, that use ask.com, that you, you know, things like that. So there's this little 5% fringe that is in there as well. The key, go back here, the key, there's a 10% increase in 12 months. So as we all know, anything growing 10% is moving pretty good. All right, so obviously it, it's go, doing great. Duh, you have to rank high in search results to obtain traffic. 62% of searchers only look at the first page. That's a little bit old. I believe it's larger now, especially with people searching on tablets and phones. They're less likely to go to page two. 90% never go past page three on a, on a desktop or a laptop. So it's important, yeah, everybody wants to be in page one, but it, it is important to at least be page three or better. If you get ranked 50th out of 500,000 websites for whatever it is you do, that sounds cool because you're better than 499,000 other websites. Well, there's 10 results in a page. If you're 50th, you're at the bottom of page five. Nobody's ever gonna find you. Oh, and then this is old. You see, this is three, four years old. 50% of online shoppers begin uh, with a search. I'm certain that's much, much higher today. Okay, so areas of search results. This is what we used to show. This is the old, this is Google, old way, okay? You see you've got some ads here in this yellow and down the right-hand side. You got a map up in the corner. You got, these are the top three organic results. And then here are the, the things that relate to the map, the entries that relate to the map. Google makes money on their ads. They don't make any money on the maps. They don't make any money on the organic results. They make money here, They're, they make their billions and billions, 25 cents, 50 cents a click. For these you pay, when somebody clicks on your ad, you don't pay to be placed there. So to get there it's free, you don't pay till somebody clicks on it, okay? So this is the old way, all right? Everything was kind of together, it looked nice. 
This is the new way. They changed to this about three months ago. If you notice, nothing on the right hand side. It's kind of hard to see, but see my screen comes, so there's, they took away all the ads on the right hand side. This result, this only shows two ads. They will go as many as four ads on top. Then they have the maps, and then scrolling down below that, I had to take a couple screenshots to show all this, but if you scroll down, you see here are the organic results. And then farther down again, a few more organic results and a few more ads on the bottom. I believe, and I'm gonna go back, if we look at this again, okay, so it used to look like this. So Google made money here, they made money here, okay? Certainly it's most expensive, you pay per click, it's most expensive to appear here. But there are people that for lesser money, you could appear on the right hand side, still be high on page one, people could still see you, not as obvious as up here, but I believe I mean, Google's in business to make money, right? So I believe what they're doing, by only having a maximum of four ads here, none over here, they're making all these people that were happy being in positions five, six, and seven, to now start to compete to be up here. And these ads roughly are ranked in the order of who's willing to pay the most when they get clicked on them. Does that make sense? So you, have, you need to show up high. Also, if you notice, the map came in here, okay, so that's, it's all pushing the organic results, the stuff that's free that Google makes no money on, is pushing all those results farther down because they want people to click on what they make money on, right? They're trying to, minim I think they're trying to minimize these and get more people bidding up here and clicking up here. And this is, this is on a laptop on my desk. Think about it if you look at it uh, on a tablet or on a phone. You really have to scroll down to get down to the organic results. Any questions on any of that? Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is as you move forward, you really want to look at, and it's hard when you're starting a company, I know, because you don't seem to have much money or whatever, but doing Google AdWords, paying for ads, paying for the clicks, you know, 25 cents, 50 cents, whatever, may be an important strategy for you with your marketing efforts. So search engine optimization affects the organic results, the main results that now are below the map. Remember it showed the map? Everybody trusts those because they, if they use Google, they like Google, they trust the results. Everybody's willing to click on them. Some people will not click on the ads because they know they're ads. Everybody's willing to click on the organic, but it takes a while. Number one, your website has to be in existence at least a year before you can get ranked at all. So if you're starting a company, you're creating a new website, saying, hey, this is great, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna gangbusters, Google will not rank you for the first year. And the reason is, there's a ton of websites that get created for school projects, for, oh, I wanna learn WordPress, I wanna whatever, and people just putting websites out. Well, they wanna see the websites there for a year, it's being used as a marketing tool, it's being updated frequently. Then they start saying, okay, this is not somebody's class project, this is really a business here, we'll start ranking it. So, SEO is really not applicable the first 12 months that you, you have your site up. Pay-per-click campaigns. Now I showed you the two at the top, they'll have up to four now. Yes, sir? Is that true for if you're paying for the ad? No, that's not true if you're paying for the ad. Again, that's Google wants, wants to drive people there, right? So pay-per-click, the searchers know that they're paid ads, um, although they keep, I would say, minimizing the differentiation between the paid and the organic. Now it has a little yellow button on it that just says add, but it's real small, but the rest of it looks like an organic result. 10 to 30% are willing to click on, on the ads, but that's increasing. It's increasing a couple things. I mean, some of you guys are so young that I'm sure you don't remember this, but back when paid search first started, you could search on something like since I read baseball tickets, and you'd see a paid ad, and you'd click on it, it would take you to a porn site. It would take you to, there, was, there could be no, re, there was no relevancy sometimes between what the ad said and the site that it dropped you on. Google's worked very hard to make sure that what you're talking about is what the website, what the ad says correlates to the website. So people are trusting them more. So they're more willing to click. A lot of the reason only 10 to 30% wouldn't click is because it would take you to some spammy site which maybe dumped something on your, you know, dumped a virus or something on your computer, so people got skittish. Google's not stupid, they realized if we don't increase the trust factor, 
nobody's going to click on them. So they've worked very hard over the past eight or 10 years to increase that, good, make a good correlation between the ad and the website. Really nice thing about the pay-per-click campaigns, because you write the ads yourself, you can update those instantaneously. So if you're running a special, uh, we have a, a, a rug company, a rug showroom, where they're doing 18 months same as cash. Started May 1st, it'll be done at the end of the month, so we can turn it on and start showing up, turn it off. Uh, a lot of times we'll test out different things, like does 10% off work better or does free shipping work better? Try different, do A-B testing with the ads and see uh, what tends to bring more people to the website. And then the maps, you saw there was kind of, remember it was in the bottom half of that first slide I showed. It uses data from Google My Business. So, well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So SEO, the art and technology, and creating and structuring websites, it really is doing to your website what it is that Google, and I talk about Google, primarily about Google, because you know, like I said, there's 70%. Doing things to your website to make Google like it better than your competitors for the terms that are important. The displayed information needs to be compelling, and it is an ongoing process. If you just do SEO once and set it and forget it, yeah, you'll get an increase, but then you'll fade off eventually. You gotta, you gotta stay on top of it, you gotta keep working it. The search engines frequently change their algorithms, but they don't ever publish like a manual of, okay, this is what you have to do. You learn through continual implementation, through uh, research and education, reading blogs, reading, there's a lot of people out there writing about SEO and how things are changing. So it's, it's an ongoing effort uh, to stay on top of it. Pay-per-click campaigns. That's the ads at the top, right? It's creation of ads and the selection of placement. And we say selection of placement, well, the advertisements are short, 25, 35, 35, meaning the first line you can only have 25 characters. Then you get 35 characters and then 35 characters. So you get real creative, and you, you, know, you gotta be real creative in how you write the ads. Sometimes we even take out spaces. You know, if, if you can still read it, sometimes you can smush words together, but it's still readable to save. You, know, you write something that's good and it comes out to be 36 characters, you're like, oh, what am I gonna do? You know, so is there a way to abbreviate? Is there a way to whatever? The amount bid dictates placement. So if I'm willing to pay 50 cents every time I, somebody clicks on my ad for, for incubator space, but Pat's willing to pay 75 cents for an ad for incubator space, generally his ad will appear above mine. Now, you declare a daily budget, so I'm, gonna spend, I'm, I'm willing to spend up to $20 a day on ads. If I'm paying 50 cents, that means I get 40 clicks. As soon as that 40th click is done, my ad gets pulled down. So it's a little different from a newspaper because it's dynamic. Also, typically what we do with our clients is if they're spending, say, $20 a day, or maybe at 50 cents a click, you could burn through all that by 10 in the morning or 12 noon. We tell Google to evenly space it throughout the day. So maybe it only shows up one out of every five searches on the terms we're targeting. So it allows it to show up the entire day. So every time you do a search, those ad results can be different. I said you pay when clicked, that's what's kind of pay per click. Can you do that by geography? You can do it by geography, uh, you can do zip code, you can do radius. Um, like the rug store we're talking about, we do a 12 mile radius around his address. You can also do um, negatives. Show me in all of greater Cincinnati except for these zip codes or except for these parts of town. Um, and they, they do a pretty good job of that based on the IP address. It said flexible, quickly updated. You can target near-term events, target webinars, target sales, target new inventory, something like that. Google's really started uh, pushing something called ad extensions. And they are, um, I'll, I'll go back and show you. Because, okay, here if you see these, these links under here, or these gray, those are ad extensions that make your ad bigger. If you don't use ad extensions, these don't show, and you just have kind of that three-line ad. So ad extensions are a way to make your ad bigger, differentiate it a little more, call out maybe some specials, things like that. 
Um, you got to watch it. Google doesn't really announce when they come out with new ad extensions. You just, I mean, it, it happens not all the time, but we'll be in the office and somebody will be like, hey, what's this with this? Has anybody seen this site link extension? No, and we all get on, kind of look at it, and it's just something that new that they include in the product. So. Does that cost more? No. Why wouldn't everybody use it? Pardon? Why wouldn't everybody use it? They just don't know about it. Yeah. Well, we know about them. It's our business. That's all we do is SEO and AdWords campaigns, right? You're running your business. You may not want to spend 10 hours a week learning AdWords, right? So you get in, you set it up, you got it running, you see it showing up. You're like, okay, I'm off doing my business, you know, running my business now. We'll look at it next month type thing. Okay, so where were we? One of the extensions Google has uh, that started a little bit ago is you can actually, uh, Google will give you an 800 number or toll-free number that'll, that can show up in your ad, and then they track um, data with that. How many times it was called, how long the calls were, uh, date, time, all those type of things. You can start getting some call statistics coming off your ad to see whether that's effective or not. All right, the maps portion, which now we saw is right in the center, a little bit larger than it had been in the past, becoming more important. Data's pulled from Google My Business. And they've changed it. It used to be Google Plus, and it was Google Business. I went and looked yesterday, and now it's Google My Business. So they do change it. But they will, if you have a website, they will create a Google My Business entry for you. Because they want, it, they want the maps to be you know, as all-inclusive as possible. The problem is, if they pull it off your website, they're using software. There's nobody really looking at your website. It's just software. So the software is trolling your website, trying to figure out what your business is about. And that's the data they put out there for your Google My Business. It's better to claim your own entry. Go out. Um, Search on, you search on Google My Business and click on the link and take it in. Go in and claim uh, your own entry. You put the address, you put your website in there, your phone number, they will, one of two things, they'll either call the phone number associated with that website to give you a verification code so you can claim that Google My Business entry or they'll send you a postcard. You can opt whichever one you want. And that's so that you don't go out and, you know, your uh, competitor doesn't go out and claim your Google My Business entry and set it up incorrectly. So. It has, to be, it has to use the information that's on the website so they trust that. That's where the, the phone call goes or the postcard goes. Yes, sir. I would, just because somebody searches on SEO in Cincinnati, um, I certainly would like, like it to pop up in the maps. Especially because you know my organic results can be farther down. They're going to see the maps first, and it's got you know the address there. It'll have the phone number there. Um, yeah, I mean it's storefronts, but I think I think anybody. I mean the more you show up in search results, the better. It, <laughs> yes. Um, the question was, you at least have to have a physical address to be on the map. Well, it is a map, right? But in my opinion, for the credibility of a business, you want some type of physical address, right? So if you're out trying to, trying to win business, win some clients, but you're, you're not able to tell them where your business is, even if it's your home address, or Patrick can give you a mailbox here if you want to use an address here, at least you've got to have something, right? I think just for credibility's sake. And then you can use that address for your Google My Business for your website and for your Google My Business entry. That all makes sense? Okay, well, big thing though, have all three of those areas where you can show up. The most important thing are what keywords do you show up? For which keywords do you show up? They can be single words like tickets, phrase, baseball tickets, let's say Reds tickets, sometimes called a key phrase. But that's what people would search, would enter into the search bar trying to find your business. The way to identify great keywords, make sure they're being used. Make sure, and we find this mostly when we work with uh, large companies where maybe the marketing department doesn't 
talked with the sales department and sales is out talking to their clients and prospective customers so they know how those people are talking about the, the service or the, the product and maybe the marketing department never gets that information. So marketing thinks it's talked about one way, but sales is hearing that they're using different terminology. So it's important to use the terminology that your prospects are using, not what your internal nomenclature is. Don't use gut feel, use research. Apply those terms in the proper places. Use one to two keywords per page, and then you want to talk about those terms on that page of your website, but only target a keyword on one page. Not unusual for us to go out to a, a new client or to a prospect, and they're like, well, I, here's the five terms I'm targeting, and I just plastered it all over every page on the website, because I heard that's what will get me ranked. Talk about it everywhere, use it everywhere, all over the place. The problem with that is when the search engines find your website, and say, you know, we had the baseball tickets keyword example. If you use baseball tickets on every page of your website, the search engines come to your website, they don't know which page to rank. They're like, the whole darn thing talks about baseball tickets. I don't know, I don't know what's the most important page here talking about baseball tickets, so we'll make them all average. So they don't rank any of them high. So only target a specific keyword on one page of your website. Don't overuse the keywords. You don't say, we've got more baseball tickets than any baseball ticket seller, blah, 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 right? Four to six percent keyword density works the best. So if you have 200 words on the page, you have about three or four paragraphs, 200 words, four to six percent, use that keyword or key phrase, um, would that be eight to 12 times. Keep the list small and relevant. For SEO, if you try to, just go after the most important. Pick five or eight or 10 of the most important terms that people are using trying to find you and target those. The way to do keyword research is Google has what they call a keyword planner. And they capture, as you can imagine, Google knows everything about all of us. They capture every single term that's typed into Google search. So every time you do a search, they take that term, they put it in a database. Google Keyword Planner can interrogate against that database to see for this term, for baseball tickets, tell me in Cincinnati how many people use that term every month when they do a search. And that's how we do keyword research. We'll look at the target market, the geographic target market of our customers, and we'll take the terms that we think are relevant, and we'll put them in the Keyword Planner, and Keyword Planner will come back and say, baseball tickets is used on average 50 times a month in Cincinnati. Doesn't give you just that one term, it'll give you 50 to 100 other terms that they say are closely related to baseball tickets. Maybe it'd be ticket broker, maybe it'd be something else, right? And they'll give you the statistics for those terms as well. So maybe we start with baseball tickets, it's 50 a month on average, but there's another term that maybe is 150 a month that we hadn't thought of. And we look at it and we say, well, maybe that's a better term to use. And we'll present it to our clients and talk through it with them that, hey, instead of baseball tickets, let's use something else, all right? So you're working from data, not just from a gut feel. Yes, sir? It generally is a group of words. The closer you have an exact match, um, the better you'll rank. So if you're working on baseball tickets and they're searching on baseball tickets, you'll rank better than if they're, you use baseball tickets and they're searching on tickets for baseball. You'll still show up, but if somebody else is targeting tickets for baseball, they'll be ahead of you, all right? So Google has, they have a pretty good algorithm trying to figure out how to match them but the more exact of a match you can have, the better. Uh, it's important to, to think global versus local. Are you targeting, is it something, are you nationwide? Are you trying to target people just in Cincinnati? How are you gonna approach search? Select the terms out of the keyword planner that you see that relate well to your business and you can download them. There's a download, it'll drop them into an Excel spreadsheet for you and then you can manipulate them. You can you know, do whatever out of Excel. Okay, so we figure out our keywords, which ones to target. Now the question is, well, where do I use them on my website? What do I do? And the file names, like for SEO, okay? Search Engine Experts LLC, SEO.html. So the file name, if we're going after SEO, which we are. In the page title, and if many, many people nowadays are using WordPress. WordPress is great. 
There's a couple SEO plugins. The Yoast SEO plugin on WordPress is fabulous. See, there's spots to enter all this stuff page by page. In the meta description, it's great. And the meta description generally is what shows up in the search results where it has in the black, it kind of talks about what that page is about. You know, you'll see the, the title in blue and then you'll see the URL in green and then there's a couple lines in black. Well, that comes, generally comes from the meta description which they pull off that page that they're presenting in the results. So you want to talk about what that page is. But like with anything, the farther to the beginning the keywords are, the, the things that are at the beginning of the sentence are more important than things trailing at the very end. So instead of saying, we sell more baseball tickets than anybody, I would make the meta description to say, baseball tickets are our specialty. Get the keyword or key phrase to the very beginning of it. Right? That makes it more important because nobody, you know, keep in mind, this, this is all looked at by uh, software. Nobody's looking at it individually. So software has to be coded a certain way. So, so they code it that, hey, the farther up front the terms are, the more important they are. Images on the file names. Everybody just they put an image out on your website and it's just the date or maybe it's, you know, 1234.jpg or something like that change that file name in the image to be baseballtickets.jpg, all right? Same thing, the alt tags. If you ever mouse over, I'm sure you've moused over an image, and the little bubble pops up to tell you what that image is, put the keywords in there as well. And then page copy. And certainly bulleted lists are very good. Um, you know, we've all read stuff. You see a bulleted list, your eye goes to it makes it you know, more relevant, well, the search engines know that. So they, they give a lot of weight to bulleted lists. Backlinks or external links, those are links from other websites that point to yours, okay? It's a vote of confidence. If somebody is on another website and that website is willing to have them leave their website to come to you, if they put a link on it to come to you, they're saying there's something over there it's pretty important that I'm willing to have people leave my site to go see it. So it's a big vote of confidence. So the more of these you can get, the better. Blogs are a great way. If you get involved in an industry or an association blog and maybe you're writing something, then you can say, maybe write a little bit on that, but you have more detail on your website, you can say you can find more information here and have a link to your website. Um, or even you just sign it. Okay, it's so written Ken Saunders and it says search engine experts and I make that search engine experts a hot link back to my website. Profiles, you know, if you're on LinkedIn, if you have Facebook, if you uh, industry associations, things like that, make sure those profiles are updated. Make, uh, you know, and then put links in there back to your website. Do any press releases, articles, anything like that? Most of the time, if somebody calls and they want to interview you or can give us a couple quotes on this, you know, you're, nobody's getting paid for that. So the way you get paid is you say, hey, that's great, I'm happy to talk to you. Would you, you know, make sure that the company name is a hot link back to our website when you publish that online. And everybody knows the game, so they're like, sure. And you, you know, that, but so that, that's the currency, is get that backlink. Directories, you know, industry and association websites. Many times we find our clients, they're members of associations and they've not gone out and updated their information or it just sits there it just says their name but nobody's ever gone to that association and say hey make that a hot link to my website or let me go f flesh out my profile on that website so it says more about our company and then generally there's places for you know what's your website URL and is there an email address to contact you things like that if possible use the keywords as the hot link so you can say baseball tickets and have it come back to your site that's better than just having it say Ken Saunders and come back to your site. This is actually descriptive about what the website is doing. And then don't forget internal links. So you link from page to page, right? If I have baseball tickets and football tickets and hockey tickets, on the baseball tickets page, maybe at the bottom I say, we also have football tickets and hockey tickets. And those are links over there. Because that's demonstrating to the search engines what it is you think is important on your own website. The more links you have to the pages, you're saying, we think more people are going to want to go to this page. We think it's pretty important, so the search engines notice that, and it helps in getting ranked as well. Does that all make sense? It's a good, okay. All right, so where does your site rank? 
don't be fooled. If you use Google, don't be fooled by what you see. There's a thing called Google personalization where they customize the search results to you. They watch what you're doing and which websites you like and they increase, improve the rankings of those in your search results. Because they know if you're, you know, always want to go to this site to buy your baseball tickets, well, instead of putting it seventh or eighth, they're gonna start moving it up. Eventually it'll be first or second, if that's your preferred site. So what happens? You're at work, you're checking your website, you're doing this and that, right? Well, then you do a search for your product or service and magically your website's nice and high. And you're like, oh, look, search on baseball tickets, I'm right up at the top. Well, that's because you're always on your site. You're always clicking through, you're working it, right? So don't be fooled. It's not what your prospects and customers see is the point, okay? They're not always on your website. To find out where you rank, web position is a good tool. I believe it has a 30-day trial period if you want to go out and use it and put some keywords in and your, your URL, it'll tell you where you rank. Um, that, that's the one we use for our clients. I think after 30 days, I, I know we pay, but I think there's a 30-day free trial. Cute Rank has a free version, but you can only use it for one URL. So, you know, we'll go in a lot of times. I mean, so for us, where we have a lot of clients, it's not so useful, but for an individual, it's, it's a good tool. Okay, so the question is, um, on websites where you can pay to have backlinks, have paid directories where you can pay to have it point back to your website. Uh, he had heard that Google no longer is not looking at those so favorable, and that is true. They understand that. They're, you know, it's essentially, you know, people are trying to game the system, right? Let me go buy a whole bunch of backlinks and help my rankings. So Google understands that now, and they're, they're not penalizing you for doing it. You're just not getting rewarded for doing it. So essentially, there's no value, so people are going to stop doing it. This is where you're buying content from. Search engines don't like duplicate content. So we see accountants, dentists, where there, there are companies out there that they'll set up websites for dental offices all across the country, and we'll give you new content once a month, right? Well, yeah, it's new to you, but it's the same stuff across 100 other websites across the country. So it doesn't help you, okay? Because the search engines see it's not unique, you didn't, obviously you didn't write it yourself, so it's just not helping. Now, you know, but the flip side is you hear all the time, new content on your website will help. Well, it only helps if it's unique. So that's nice, it looks good, it really looks nice to your clients, because they're saying, hey, there's new stuff up there, but it's not gonna help you very much, or at all in search. Does video content on your website increase your ranking at all? Uh, yes, especially if it's through YouTube, which is owned by Google. Yeah. Yep, uh, and anything, anything new, you know, new content certainly helps. The challenge with video, although I imagine this will change ultimately as voice recognition is so much better now than it was a couple years ago. With video, they look at the tags that are associated with the embedded video to understand what it is. They're at this time, they're not listening to the video and trying to do voice recognition, but I'm sure they'll get there, and the, I mean, they gotta be working on that, so. They have, uh, the question is can uh, we put ads on our website for other products and make money that way from them essentially, right? For type of you know, drinks or whatever. We're talking about Google AdWords where the ads appear at the top of search results. The sister product to that is called AdSense, okay? And you can on your website you can have Google place three ads on your website in a little block on the corner, and if anybody clicks on those ads, you get half of what they charge uh, the customer. The guy that's, that's doing fabulous with this, do you guys know, um, Ask the Builder, Tim, is it Tim Carter that's in the Inquirer, syndicates in the Inquirer, Ask the Builder? He is one of the top money makers from Google because not, not only is he syndicated, but what he does, he's really smart. Before he, when he writes an article, before he sends it out to the, all the newspapers, and I think he's in two or 300 newspapers across the country, he posts it on his website first so that he has the copyright to it. He wrote it's his. Then he sends it to the newspapers so they're using his content, right? But he's been so successful that when people search on 
how do I build a deck or how do I do whatever, okay? His website shows up. So people come to his website, how do I build a deck? And here's ads for, you know, uh, steel leaf blowers or something or, you know, drills and people will click on those and he's making, he makes, you know, 50% or whatever, Google charges for that. He makes enough money, Google invites him specifically out to some of their conferences and Sergey Brin and Larry Page have asked to meet him. And he's just a Cincinnati guy that got tired of the construction, actually doing it, started writing about it instead. So, I'm gonna brag on Tim a little bit. WordPress is super easy. Um, there's a ton of stuff out there, you know, if you, need to, if you need help, like just to Google to find out how do I do this in WordPress, how do I do that in WordPress. It's, it's such a challenge with a small business because you have no money, so I'm gonna do it myself. But if you're working on your website, you're not working on your business. So, you know, it, you can do it. And with WordPress, you can have a really nice looking website. But the question comes down to, you know, do I wanna spend eight or 10 hours a week on that, or would it be better if I spend eight or 10 hours a week on running my business? And generally what happens in a small business, you do them both, right? And you're working 80 hours a week, right? <laughs> so, but um, for a basic website, if you're getting into four figures, a grand, 1,500 bucks, somebody's overcharging you. With as easy as WordPress is now, there are a lot of people out there that can do a nice website for you, you know, in the four, five, seven hundred dollar range. So you got it, but man, I see, I run into companies all the time. Yeah, we just spent $20,000 redoing our website. We just spent $40,000 redoing our website. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. but people just don't know. So the marketing firm comes to them and says, okay, we need to redo your website, it's gonna be 40K, and they're like, well, okay. They're just, so. so the question was, how do we gauge success with our keywords? And um, years ago, a couple years ago, when you looked at Google Analytics, and Google Analytics, if you don't know, is free software from Google that you can put on your website, it captures all the activity on your website. So you can see how many people came to your site, what pages they went to, how long they stayed, a whole bunch of stuff. Well, Google Analytics used to show you the keywords that somebody used when they did, an or did a search and came to your website through the organic results. Well, they've been smacked down so much over privacy concerns that essentially they're saying now, we're not gonna show any of the keywords. Even though it really didn't tie to a specific person, they just, for the most part, they've stopped telling you what keywords people used when they found you organically. So that did hurt us, okay? That was one thing we would report on. But what we do is, we do two different things. We use web position to show the, where the website ranks for the, the terms. We'll take a snapshot before we make any changes and generally they don't show up at all or very poorly. And then month over month, we run a web position report to show our clients, okay, for these keywords, we did search engine optimization, your rankings are improving, so you're getting higher, okay? That's nice. The other piece that we do then is we do a report card with the Google Analytics numbers in it to show every month how many people came to your site, how many came through search, how many came through uh, referred traffic, direct traffic, through social, how long they stayed, what the bounce rate was. And the reason we started doing that, I mean, it's just a, a learning from having the company, is that I could look at the analytics and I could see their numbers were improving. Getting more people through search traffic, we were doing our job. Analytics is on the site. I'm assuming the client, you know, early in the, the life of the company, I was assuming our clients were looking at that and could see that. Well, what would happen is they would get to the end of their contract. And they'd be like, well, what do you know? Is that SEO stuff working or not? And I, would, I lost a couple clients, but they're like, well, it just doesn't feel like it's working for us. Well, so then I started, let's put some numbers around it. So we go out every quarter now with all these numbers and show them, okay? You used to get 75 people a month to your website through search, and now you're getting 525 per month. The question is how do we charge for uh, search engine optimization? And we are, that's a, that's a great question. <laughs> I believe um, that we are unique, I still haven't found anybody else in Cincinnati that does this. I believe we're unique in Cincinnati in that we do a pay for performance model for search engine optimization. You know, we talked about Nobody goes past page three when they do a search. So after we do, 
SEO on your website, if we can't get your website at least on page three, we don't charge you. There's no value. If I get you, like I talked about, 50th out of 500,000 websites for a certain term, that sounds great because you're better than 499,000 other websites, nobody's going to page five to find you. So we don't charge you. Well, we, we run a snapshot the first day of every month. We run a web position report to see the first day of every month where you rank. And then that's what we use to determine whether, you know, what page we're on. Um, if we get you to page three, there is a little bit of value, not a ton, a little bit, so we charge a little bit. Page two, there's more value, so the price goes up. If we get you all the way to page one and, you know, in position one of Google, that's the premium. That's where everybody wants to be, so that's premium priced. But it puts, what it does is it puts us on the same side of the table as our clients, right? If we, um, yeah, so we're working together. They want to be ranked as high as possible to drive more business for them, and we want to get them ranked as high as possible to you know, drive more business for us, so. SEO doesn't really SEO will not help you if your website's less than a year old. Now, you want to still think about it a little bit, because, I mean, it's almost, it, the search engines have bots, which is just software. that trolls the internet. When it finds your website, it'll come back every set amount of time, okay? Generally, it'll come back every two or three weeks, initially, okay? If it sees no changes to your website, if it comes to your site two or three or four times and there's no changes, it's not gonna come back two or three weeks. It's gonna come back three or four weeks and then four or five weeks, okay? Nothing's going on there. I'm not gonna spend my time going to see if there's anything new. So what happens is Google actually takes a snapshot of your website. So when they come back, they compare to see, has anything changed, right? Now, if you're changing it a lot, they come back every two or three weeks, and every time they come back, there's something new, they're gonna start coming back every week or two, and then maybe every week, and then maybe every couple days, right? Talked about Tim Carter, they're visiting his site a couple times a day, because he's always posting new content, and they wanna show that new content, they wanna get it ranked. Is that? But, that, uh, but in the first year, it does, it's not going to speed that up. No, but it'll speed it up. I guess where I was going with that, it'll speed it up from um, when you hit one year and you know, it takes them two weeks to get to you. If you hit the 54-week mark and you've been doing stuff to it where they see it's changing and you're working it, you'll get ranked closer to that one-year anniversary, right? If you wait for 52 weeks and then start working your website, it'll take you maybe six months from that point. So you don't get ranked in that first year, but it can get you ranked faster after the year is up. What was the, what was the plugin you mentioned for file names? For, um, for WordPress, for SEO? Yeah. Uh, Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T. The, the question was, how's the density of the, the print versus pictures and other images, things like that? affect search. The best thing for search would be to have a lot of copy, four to six hundred words of copy, have it near the top of the page, have it all optimized, okay? That, that's the best thing for search. That's terrible for your users. People come to a web page and they see just blocks of copy, they're going to bounce out and go find somewhere else, right? So it's, it's a balancing act because you want to make it, when you get people to your website, you want to make it, they want to stay. They want to look around, right? So you want to make it attractive. Okay, so it's, but that hurts SEO a little bit, right? But if all you do is SEO and you bring people and they don't like it and leave, there's no value there either, right? So it's, a, it's, a, it's just a balancing act. So you make it look nice, but you have good copy kind of intermingled in there, and uh, that works pretty well. Okay, so, so the question is, in the first year, could, you, could Facebook be a potential way to drive traffic to your website? Well, Facebook's always a way to drive traffic, which is great. Um, it could help, all right? If people, uh, they do a search, they see the Facebook, they go to that, and then that links back. It's a little kind of extra steps. Well, again, Google's in business of making money. What they want you to do is buy ads, or pay, you know, do the pay-per-click, and pay them 25 cents every time somebody clicks on it. But the Facebook could help a little bit. I, I would think there's not gonna be a ton of success that way, but maybe it's a little better than just depending on the website that's not getting ranked. So how 
how does SEO work different on an e-commerce search versus on a content website search? They, the bots can tell the difference. They can tell if it's you know e-commerce because there's shopping carts, there's right. whatever, right? Um, there's a lot of value in the e-commerce sites that have been around for a while that have made a name. It can be very hard on an e-commerce site to break in where there's a lot of reputable companies already. Um, I think if you looked under the covers on the e-commerce sites, the ones that are ranking, they're probably doing a really good job of like the meta tags and all the behind the scenes uh, coding using keywords there. But also if, um, I don't know, batteries pops my mind. You have an e-commerce site selling batteries. If you've got a page where it's got 75 different types of batteries on there, that's demonstrating to the search engines that that's a pretty strong page to be ranked for batteries, right? Maybe not each individual page, but that whole page where it's talking, you know, in essence, maybe there's not a lot of copy there, but there's a lot of content around batteries, so. The question is, what, what do you, what's my opinion on buying uh, your company name, your brand name uh, for Google AdWords? If somebody searches on your company name, I'm, I'm changing my opinion as I'm telling you this, as I, because it used to be in the old way, remember the old way, where you actually could see some organic results? I would tell somebody, well, you're, going, you're showing up first anyways when somebody searches on your company name. So there's no point in buying that. But as the search results have changed and you're off the page, depending on the price for your brand name, I would think it'd, it'd probably be worth doing. Um, generally, brand names are fairly inexpensive just because there's only one of them, right? But um, we do, a lot of our clients, when they do, we do an AdWords campaign for them, we'll target their competitor brand names. So, um, <laughs> anyway, so we'll, we'll set up a competitors group for our clients where we target the competitors. So if somebody's searching for whatever, their ad shows up and trying to drive traffic that way. It's important to, the question was, Okay, you do SEO, you get ranked well, how do you, how do you stay there? Is it important to keep doing things? And the answer, the short answer is yes. Um, you want to keep using your website as a marketing tool. So keep updating it, keep adding pages, maybe rewrite some pages. It's important to stay on top of how search is changing so that you can, you can update your website that way. A good example was a couple years ago, Google started looking at page load time determining, using that as a de one of the determining factors in how well you ranked. The reason is they want to show the most relevant websites at the top for the term you're searching. We've all been there where you do a search, you see something, you click on the link, it takes you a page, and it takes forever to load, right? It's just whatever. They have big graphics, so they got something going on, right? It takes forever. So what do you do? You hit the back button, right? You're out. So Google says, well, that page is less relevant to the searchers because nobody's staying. So they started dropping those pages in the rankings. So we looked at our client base and their websites and worked with them to improve the page load time so that if they get ranked, somebody sees them and clicks, the page will appear right away. So those are the type of things that it's important to stay on top of so that you know, you're know you not doing a set it and forget it. You're continually understanding what they're looking for and make sure your website reflects that. No, you want to, the question was in AdWords, do we recommend having a, an internal page that's very specific to the, the ads and the keywords? And yes, we do recommend that because the closer they're related, the better you'll rank, the less you'll have to pay per click. And also, just from a usability perspective, if it dumps, the AdWords takes to the home page, and then they're expected to click or read and figure out where to go to find the product they were looking for, there's a good chance they're gonna bounce out. Just take them straight to that page with the product.